back to Technique Quad. Today we're going to talk about the differences between hip dominant movements and knee dominant movements and an easy way to tell which ones are which. The easiest way for me is to look at this vertical reference line. Whichever joint deviates the most from this vertical reference line is the joint that is going to take the stress and then the muscles around that joint are the muscles that are going to have the most load with that movement. So it all comes down to having a vertical shin. So if my shin stays very vertical and my hips go back, and my hips deviated the most from the vertical reference line, and so my hips take the stress. Likewise, if my knees go forward and my back stays vertical, my knees went the furthest away from the vertical reference line, my hips are still in line, so my knee took the stress. So there's a lot of different movements that um, have your knees go further forward than others. Some movements have their hips go uh, much further back than others, and you have a vertical shin. So examples. If I'm here, I'm doing a front squat, I'm much more likely to have a more upright back position and have my knees go forward than say a low bar back squat where my shin is going to stay much more vertical and I'm going to have my hips back much further. Or even say a, a good morning which we went over the other day, it's all hip dominant, my hips go back very far, my knees or my knees stay in line with the vertical reference point, my shins are very vertical. So that's a very hip dominant movement. Likewise, for any, for any single leg work you might have, a, say a pistol for example, if I'm here and my knee on a pistol is likely to go very, very far forward. So I'm here, knee forward, my hip doesn't really shoot back that much on a pistol. Uh, as opposed to um, the movements that I just discussed where my shin's very vertical, my hips are back very far. Unless you have very good leverage, uh, very long torso and very short limbs, um, your pistols are gonna have a very heavy forward shin angle. Uh, someone with really good leverage might have a little more of a, of a vertical shin um, than you would if you have a very short torso and long limbs. Um, but for the most part, it's gonna be a very knee dominant, very quad dominant type movement. So that's the easy way to tell whether a movement is a quad dominant or hip dominant. If you're squatting incorrectly, if you're a person who on a back squat, you know, goes like this, your heels come off the ground, your knees shoot forward, and you should be squatting more correctly here, then you can see why you might have knee pain. Because all the stress, since your knees shot in front of that vertical reference point, is on your knees and your hips are taking none of the load. Your knees are taking all of the load. So uh, if you're a person who doesn't have a coach and doesn't have someone to watch you, a good idea is to get a camera just like my camera set up right now. Just put some type of vertical reference line um, on the side of your body. Do your movement, you know, practice your technique just like this. You know, if I'm front squatting in here, if I'm back squatting, same thing. And I can see um, how forward my knees are or how back my hips are. Uh, and you can see where the stress is going uh, on which joints and which muscles. See you tomorrow.